Hi everyone, Genjix here. To control a DIY CNC, so far I've been using a Nintendo Switch controller. It has always worked relatively well for fairly rough moments. However, the joypad has a significant flow. Even the slightest movement can cause another axis to move. Moreover, my PC with a parallel port suddenly stopped working. And not finding any quick and affordable solution, I decided to use the only ESP32 I had at home, loading RabbitGRBL onto it, which seems to have a good backlash control. The experience of using the joypad in GRBL is even worse than using it in Mac3, so I had to find a solution. I focused on what are called uh, hand wheels, but these do not have uh, nothing support for GRBL. So I thought, what's the problem? In the end, I can build one myself and make it communicate with the PC, right? So I bought a 100 PPR optical encoder for 15 euros, and with a microcontroller and some other components I found at home, I tried to build a first prototype. I admit I had to switch from a Node MCU to an Arduino Nano because the interrupt handling isn't well organized even though the 80 mega 328p can only handle two interrupts and uh, I'm an STM32 enjoyer. So I cannot start doing the first soldering following this schematic. I leave all the files for anyone interested in the description. The initial idea for the program was to make the Arduino simulate a keyboard as if it were a human interface device. So the encoder or switches send a signal to the microcontroller which interprets it and based on the type of signal presses a sequence of keys. After a couple of researches I quickly realized that not all microcontrollers can do this and of course none of the ones that I have include the chip which allows me to simulate a keyboard. So I found a not so common solution. When the microcontroller receives an external signal, it sends a specific code over the serial connection. This is then read by a Python script, which converts it into a string. It will then compare the string with a small database, and the desired key combination will be pressed. Going more into technical details, to handle the encoder signal, I used interrupts. Since there's a perforated disk with two phototransistors, I modeled the operation as follows. When the disk rotates clockwise, a hole first passes through A, which turns on. Then when it reaches B, A is still on. So it can be noted that when A has a rising edge, B is definitely at a low logic level. When the disk rotates counterclockwise, it can be noted that when A has a rising edge, B is definitely at a high logic level. After a couple of tests, I noticed that sometimes the encoder had some bounce back, so I added a sort of software filter, which seems to work fairly well. Here you can see the simple Python code that, using specific libraries, can read the serial input and store it as a string. So now I can start designing the external case. And that's the result. So I can start printing and placing the components inside the case. Of course, I made some measurements mistakes, so I had to make some manual adjustments. Once finished, I run the final test. Here's a clip of the serial communication test. Now I'll go test it on the milli machine. This is my CNC. I built it in this summer and I've designed it to machine steel and other materials like aluminium. I will upload a video on the build. So if you are interested in this and many other technical stuff, please consider to subscribe. You definitely won't regret.
In the end, I'd say I managed to achieve a satisfying result that I can update in the future without too many problems. For example, adding functionality for a fault axis. Okay, I think it's trying to finish the video. Thank you very much for watching.